I absolutely love looking at my analytics. I do it daily. In fact, if you ask my fiance, she'll say I do it hourly. It's like a video game for me. <laughs> you know, I just, I want to know where are we at? Where's our traffic? How are we doing? How does this compare to yesterday? How did it compare to last week, last year? Uh, and just watching those numbers grow, it's an addicting feeling once, once you get started. That was the voice of Ryan Fitzgerald. And you know what else is addicting? Watching your lead volume go up, watching your transactions, sales volume, and your GCI all go up. Much, much more on all that coming up today. Hi, my name's Matt McGee. I'm the managing editor of Homelight's Agent Resource Center. Welcome to The Walkthrough. This is the show where you'll learn what's working right now from the best real estate agents and industry experts in the country. At Homelight, we believe in real estate agents. We're here to explore how great agents grow their business, stand out from the crowd, and become irreplaceable. Let's talk about SEO, one of my favorite topics. When you do a search on Google, there's a chance you'll see slightly different results than the next person. There's also a chance you'll see slightly different results from week to week or even day to day. So your mileage might vary a little bit here as you listen. When I was researching this episode, here's where I saw Ryan Fitzgerald's website ranking for specific terms. Ready? Number one for moving to Raleigh, moving to Durham, and moving to Chapel Hill. Number one for best neighborhoods in Raleigh, best neighborhoods in Durham, and best neighborhoods in Chapel Hill. Number one for living in Durham. Number two for living in Chapel Hill. And number three for living in Raleigh. He's even on page one for best pizza in Raleigh and best restaurants in Raleigh. Ryan has a separate website for his Charlotte office. It's number one for should I move to Charlotte? Number two for moving to Charlotte. And number three, for living in Charlotte. You want to talk about video game numbers? Last year, Ryan's Raleigh website had more than 2.1 million, that's million with an M, new visitors, and 3.5 million sessions. Now, of course, great search rankings and web traffic are useless if they're not driving leads and revenue, right? Well, consider this. Ryan says they get between 20 and 30 leads per day, depending on the month. That's inbound web leads and inbound phone calls. Ryan says they convert about 3.5% of those leads. He and his 20 agent team slash brokerage did 270 deals last year. They're on pace to do 400 this year. And Ryan says 85% of their business comes from SEO, from blogging and content marketing. Here's the best part. Ryan is going to share his blueprint for SEO success with you today. So on today's show, listen for Ryan to talk about how different blog posts serve different purposes, how he decides what to write about on his blog, the importance of a great headline, and specific tactics for getting links from high-quality websites. Grab a pen or have your laptop ready. If you're on a team, make sure your marketing person is listening to this one. I think we're going to run a little more than our normal half-hour show, but I promise it'll be worth it. You're going to want to take a lot of notes today. Ready? I hope so, because as the conversation begins, Ryan and I are talking about why so many agents focus on buying leads and paid ads, and so few focus on their website and SEO. How do you think Zillow is able to charge agents for leads? And it's very simple. Zillow uses search engine optimization to drive traffic to their website so that they can then turn around and sell the leads to realtors. And I think a big misconception on you know the realtor front is that we can't compete with Zillow when in fact we absolutely can and we should be competing with Zillow. And uh, certainly when I was beginning 
with my website in 2015, and I knew SEO was going to be my foundation, my strategy. Uh, people said, why would you do that when you know Zillow is already there and Realtor.com is already there and Redfin is already there? Right. And I said, because you know, on a local level, I can compete with those people, those, those websites. What percent of your business comes from people who find you via the blog? Uh, it used to be a much higher percentage, but today it's probably around 85%. And it used to be even higher than that? <laughs> As is 100%. I mean, I moved to Raleigh from Boston, didn't know anybody in the area. Uh, I started the website, started the blog. I made a bunch of cold calls because that's what people told me to do. I think I made like 300 phone calls a day using triple dialer and calling expireds, which I mean, I don't know how many expireds there are in this market, but uh, I knew if I had to continue with that, I was going to drive myself nuts. I didn't want to bother people. Uh, and it was just more comfortable for me to attract people to wanting to work with me rather than trying to chase after them and, and sell them on you know, why they should work with me to begin with. Let's dive into how this works for you. The, the, let's try to explain what SEO is. Let's explain what you're doing. Because it can get really complicated, right? There's there if you if you go far enough down in the weeds, there is a lot of very technical things that that SEO entails. But let's try to simplify it. Your approach to SEO generally boils down to two things, right? Yeah, two things. I mean, look, content creation is probably the number one. Uh, I mean, it's definitely the number one. You know, you have to create content if you're going to get people to your website. Uh, and by creating content, people are going to be visiting your website. They're going to be filling out that contact us form. Uh, and they're going to be searching for houses on your website too, because if you can, if you can generate web traffic via your blog and you can say, you know, Hey, here's a great article on moving to Raleigh, which is a, an article I like to use as an example when I'm, when I'm sort of t teaching people about my strategy, uh, you know, people will Google moving to Raleigh or living in Raleigh. They'll read my article. They'll fill out the form. They'll thank me for the great information and let me know that because of that article, they want to work with me when they make their move. Uh, and a lot of these folks are coming from California. They're coming from New York. They're coming from Texas. Um, you know, just so their price point is very, very nice. And that's certainly the type of traffic uh, we want to generate. You mentioned the moving to Raleigh article as one example. Tell me about the different types of articles that you put on the blog. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, every blog serves a different purpose. Uh, and, you know, as you get more and more familiar with SEO, you start to understand, okay, what is the strategy behind this piece of content? You know, is it, uh, I want to help the consumer answer their questions? Uh, is it branding, you know, brand awareness? So for instance, uh, you know, helping the consumer would be that moving to Raleigh article. And then brand awareness would be best restaurants in Raleigh. Now, restaurants have nothing to do with real estate. However, being the local expert, you know, that's something that realtors sort of, you know, pride themselves in is being that local expert, that local resource uh, for their clients. So when somebody does Google best restaurants in Raleigh, they're already getting familiar with our brand because that article gets read a few thousand times per month. Uh, and, you know, some of my friends are the, the owners of these restaurants. After I wrote that article, they say, you know, hey, I just wanted to reach out and say thank you for including me in your best restaurants article. Uh, you know, and, and the next time I'm at the restaurant, I ask if they're around so I can introduce myself. So. Some articles are for helping the consumer. Some articles are more for branding. Are there other types of articles, other purposes that you write with? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm glad you're asking too, because I would say another type of article and, and one of the more powerful ones is brand and uh, linking. So like linking to our blog. So we have a bunch of pieces of content that we write with a real estate twist uh, but certainly, you know, it, it would appeal to a lot of different verticals, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, living at home alone, um, you know, health and safety checklists for your house, um, you know, and then these pieces of content are, are things that we like to, you know, share with other publications and say, you know, hey, we think this would be a great fit. Uh, you know, if it's an assisted living community website, we can say, hey, you know, we think this piece on aging in place would be a great fit for your website, you know, and when is it time to really consider, 
uh, you know, moving into an assisted living center. Okay. So some, that makes perfect sense to me. So, so some content is for the consumer who is, is looking for real estate information. Some content is more for branding, being the local expert. And then some is more for providing information, but with sort of like this secondary idea that we want to get some links to this content. That is absolutely correct. And the reason we want those links from these high authority websites is that it creates a higher domain authority uh, uh, among the whole website. So that means if we can get our domain authority high enough, we will start showing up for our pages in other places. So if you Google homes for sale in Raleigh, you know, we appear for that. If you were to Google uh, an address of, a, of an active listing, you know, we would very likely be either the first, second, or third result. Uh, and, and again, that is due to having a high domain authority, a high brand awareness, and just being very, very valuable to the consumer who visits our website and, and creating a great experience for them. Let me jump in real quick. Ryan just talked about the term homes for sale in Raleigh. He said he ranks for that thanks to SEO. And remember what he said earlier about competing with the big real estate sites? Well, when I Google homes for sale in Raleigh, Ryan's website is the third organic result. It ranks higher than Redfin and Trulia. His is the only local brokerage that I see on page one. Now, that's only possible when you have great content that attracts a lot of links. You're going to learn how he gets those inbound links later in the conversation. So stay tuned for that. Right now, Let's get back to talking about the content side of his SEO strategy. Do you have a content calendar? If, if Could you tell me what you're going to be publishing for the next three months, six months, whatever it is? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have 25 pieces of content that are already written, already ready to be published. Uh, you know, I try to break them out a bit. Uh, just because, you know, it, it, it makes sense to, you know, launch one a week or, or two a week. Sometimes we do three, three a day if we, if, if, if I'm feeling ambitious, um, <laughs> you know, and, and it didn't start like that either. When I was first getting going, you know, I didn't have the money to, to pay, uh, for content or to pay writers to help me with content. Uh, so I wrote everything myself for the first few years and I just tried my best to do, you know, one article a week that I really felt would hit home with the consumer. Uh, and then, you know, I, I would sort of decide between, a real estate related piece, a local related piece. You mentioned that when you started, it was just you writing, but now you have some of your your real estate crew, the the agents and and staff helping out. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a content marketing uh, strategist. Her name is Alyssa, um, and really her job is to you know I write six articles a month, um, and then I have a couple of part time people who will also write articles for us, you know, when they have time. So it's not really the most demanding job. However, we do have, uh, you know, a, a formula that we like to use. And, uh, you know, once I'm able to teach, you know, them that formula, uh, they just, they do an incredible job of collecting the data, collecting the information, really delivering high quality content. I would imagine that listeners are are thinking, all right, maybe I'll give this a try, but I don't know what I should write about. So talk to me, Ryan, about keyword research and how you decide what you write about. And this is a fantastic question because when I was first starting, I had no clue what to write about. And I would almost say that I accidentally fell into uh, the, the best articles that I've ever written. I just accidentally fell into them and it's funny, it's almost like buyers, you have to almost put yourself in a buyer's shoes or, or a seller's shoes. And what happens there is once you enter their shoes, you start to think, what would be something that they would Google? What would be something that they would be asking? Um, you know, and it was very obvious to me that they would want information on moving somewhere or what is it like living somewhere? you know, talk to me about like the best places to live in that city, you know, best restaurants, like I mentioned before, best pizza places. So really what I started to do was dive into what would someone be asking? You know, how do I sell my house fast for cash? Uh, you know, how, when is the best time to sell my house in Raleigh? 
what would be the best way to interview a realtor to list my house? You know, things like that. Things that people would Google, you know, and in North Carolina, you know, we have something called the due diligence fee and, and most people are not familiar with due diligence and what it means. So, you know, I wrote an article on what due diligence fee means and, and how it applies to a real estate transaction here in North Carolina. Uh, and I can't tell you how many people reach out and just say, thank you for providing that information. So you're thinking about like what real estate questions they have, what questions they have about the area, especially if they don't live in the area, right? Mm -hmm, exactly. And I would bet that you use some of the more advanced SEO tools. There's, you know, various keyword research tools that are out there. Google has one. There's SEM Rush and so forth. For an agent that doesn't have access to those, maybe wouldn't understand them. Tell me if you agree with this. I ha I did a post in our listener community some time ago where I said, hey, look, if you're trying to figure out what to write about, just go to go put your city name into Google and it will come up with it like right in the search results. There'll be this little thing that says people also ask. It's funny you bring that up. They didn't have that back when I was starting. I wish they did because <laughs> <laughs> that thing is amazing. In fact, I will go back to my blog post from, from back in the day, 2015, 2016. And I will even type in, you know, that question and find out what are people also asking? So then I can go back and edit my blog to include those answers because then I just end up getting more traffic that way. So that is a very, very useful tool. And the best part is you don't even have to think about what people are asking because Google is telling you, here's what people are asking. Yeah. And, and the other good thing is that it changes over time, right? Like, so six months from now, they're going to be asking different questions. You just keep, it's like this, this, a continuing treadmill of questions that you can answer on your blog, right? Absolutely. I mean, there's, you know, obviously different trends and, uh, you know, I think, you know, if you Google it today and figure out what people are asking today in two years, they're going to be asking something totally different. When you are writing your articles, how important is the headline? The headline is super important. I mean, uh, sort of that clickability factor of your title is super important. And one of the strategies that I think a lot of people can benefit from is, you know, starting with a number and sort of creating this expectation that when the user clicks on the article, there's going to be a list with that number. So for instance, the 10 best restaurants in Raleigh, you know, if you were to click on that article, you know what you're getting yourself into. There's going to be 10 restaurants listed and it's going to be, you know, you're, I don't even know if users actually read the content within or just scroll down the list of 10 best restaurants. There's actually studies. I wish I, if I can find some, I'll put them in the show notes, but there's actually studies that, that we are as humans more drawn to that number in the headline. Super, super important right there. Yeah, BuzzFeed has made an absolute killing using that strategy. We've spent a lot of time on the content aspect of Ryan's SEO success. He talked about the importance of creating content that answers the questions people search for. He also talked about the importance of a great headline. You heard him talk about how some articles have different purposes. An article about moving to Raleigh is meant to educate buyers and bring in high intent leads. Some articles are more about branding, like 10 best pizza joints in Raleigh. Articles like that are also good on social media. When Ryan and I spoke, he had just published a senior housing guide on his blog. That is a third type of article. It's meant to both inform and attract great links. So as we get back to the conversation, I'm asking Ryan to explain how he builds links to content like that. Is that one of those articles then that you are then taking out to other organizations and saying, hey, this is a resource. You might want to link to it. Tell me what those conversations are like. How do you do that? Absolutely. And so I almost think that anybody who has a website has likely been approached by someone who has tried to get their article on their website. So basically what you're doing is you're taking a piece of content and you're sort of shopping it as a resource and you're saying, hey, I think this would be a great fit for your website or your article or, or a great addition to what your users are looking for. Uh, you know, that senior housing guide that you're referring to is, is a perfect piece, uh, you know, to add to websites that discuss, you know, elderly, uh, you know, 
related things and, and medical related things and, and house related things. And you can sort of use that piece to kind of promote, you know, your article, obtain that backlink to several different verticals. Whereas if I wrote an article on the best pizza places in restaurant, there's you know, our best pizza places in Raleigh, there's not too many people that, uh, are very interested in linking to that. So you'll just email, say there's there's a, a you know a, a local organization in Raleigh that provides services to seniors. You'll just email them, say, hey, we've got this great article. You know, if it interests you, it might be a good fit for this part of your website. Something like that. Absolutely, and, and that's it is usually very very welcoming. Uh, you know, by the by the recipient, um, and, and they find a place for it on the website. They add it and they say thank you. You know, this is exactly you know what our users are looking for. Um, Tell me about, there's a service called Help a Reporter Out. I am a big fan of it. Tell me how you use that. Yeah, absolutely. So this has been one of my uh, strategies from very early on is that I use Help a Reporter Out, you know, Hero, uh, as a a tool to kind of gain these backlinks from, uh, you know, high authority websites like uh, Forbes or Time.com. Um, you know, and a few to others that, that have really, really helped grow my website. And what you do is you just subscribe to their service. It's, it's a free service and they will email you, uh, every day, uh, three times a day, you know, morning, afternoon, and evening asking questions. And they're looking for, uh, you know, professionals in the real estate industry to help give quotes and to help give information uh, you know, in, in answering, you know, questions that people have within their article. It's reporters basically looking for sources, right? You're exactly right. It's a reporter looking for a source. So if you can be that source, you know, they're very likely to link to your website. You're doing outreach for your articles. You're checking help a reporter out for, this is for external links, which is just a huge SEO factor. Talk to me about internal links. Are they important as well? Do you care about that? Yes, this is uh, this is the easy money, and you can't overlook it. Uh, internal links are massive, and the reason they're they're so crucial is because you can add perfect anchor text so that Google will know exactly what that page is about. So if you were to visit my website, check out some of my blogs, you'll see a lot. A lot of times I have these little snippets at the end of the blog post, which, uh, you know, is totally because of internal linking that I have them, uh, you know, it'll say something like homes for sale in Raleigh, homes for sale in Durham. And it kind of just, you know, it, it gives the user a chance to click on those links, but it's a great thing for Google to sort of crawl, to read and to understand, okay, this link is taking the user to this place. That must mean this content is, is, is very likely about these keywords. So right, I, I was on, I was looking at your blog not long ago, uh, and I think you had an article about the best coffee shops in Raleigh. And so you, right in the middle of this article, maybe it was at the beginning, you'll have a sentence that says, if you're thinking about moving to Raleigh, you might want to know where the best cup of Joe is, right? And then like the little, the little phrase, moving to Raleigh, those, that exact key phrase links to your article about moving to Raleigh, right? That's that's internal linking right there. Absolutely. That's how you connect the dots. And so when you are writing articles, you are specifically looking for opportunities to link to other pages on your site. Yes, absolutely. When I write these articles, I am always looking. I, I would say, you know, if you're going to start creating content, try and find 10 internal links. Uh, if you can't get to 10, you know, that's totally fine, but just set that goal. So we've talked about links. We've talked about content. Talk to me in the big picture now, just in general, about the quality of leads that come in from your blog. Yeah, absolutely. So I've had agents join the team and they've come from other firms that, you know, have paid for Zillow leads, they've paid for Facebook leads. Uh, You know, they've paid for every lead imaginable. And the immediate response is, these leads are different in the best way possible. Uh, And that is credit to that brand awareness that we're building. So the leads will come to the website and before they even fill out the contact form, they've probably been on the website between 10 and a hundred times. They've already interacted with the website. By the time they're filling out the form, they have already sort of fallen in love with Raleigh Realty and the brand Uh, that the minute we pick up the phone to call them, they're like, 
oh my goodness, I've been reading your blog. Oh my goodness, I've been using your website. <laughs> well, th- that's a testament too. Like there's so much talk in real estate about the need for an agent to be the local expert and this is how you do it. Mm-hmm. We, we have other agents at other companies who will call us and ask us if it's okay if they send their clients to our website. And I, you know, obviously I'm like, Hey, you're more than welcome to send them. Just, you know, I I don't want you to think like, you know, if we call them, we're trying to poach them. It's just, that's our natural progression. When somebody fills out the form, uh, you know, just have them let us know that they're working with so-and-so and and we we won't, we won't bother following up with them. We have a uh, a listener community on Facebook, Ryan, with uh, 1,800, 1,900 uh, agents in there. And I posted a few days ago that we were going to be doing this interview with uh, an agent who just is nailing it with SEO. And I said, tell me what questions you want me to ask. So I have a few here. Keenan Gottschall asked, do you create content yourself or pay someone? I think we answered that already. Nancy Reynolds asked about keywords. I think we answered that already. Jordy Romer is an agent here in Washington State, not far from me. He asked a bunch of questions. Let me pick this one from his list. Do you have successful posts that you update on a regular basis? Great question. Absolutely. I might even update them too much. That's how much I, I love how it, how it works. You know, the second I update an article and add more content, more information, better graphics, uh, Google instantly pushes it up to the top. And that's really just, you know, credit to the freshness of the content that Google is looking for. You know, they want to see that you're continually updating your content and that publication date is constantly changing too. So, you know, my moving to Raleigh article, I must have written that in, you know, 2017. But if you look at, you know, the mo- the most recent update, it's 2022. Hey, you started blogging in early 2015, like within a couple months of getting your real estate license and, and joining this industry. How long did it take for all this to work? It takes time. Uh, and I don't think people are going to be happy with my response to that question because it really does. It takes time. It took me probably th- two and a half years to really see it work. Um, I think that it can happen a lot faster if you're not doing a million things at once. So I was selling houses, I was making cold calls, I was doing all this other stuff. Uh, you know, I was 25 years old trying to figure it out. And fortunately, you know, as time went by, I started to discover what works and what doesn't. Uh, so now, now that I know what works and I know what doesn't work, you know, I can build a website to 100,000 users a month in less than a year. Ryan, this has been really, really great. I love this kind of conversation. For an agent who is listening, maybe, they're, maybe they don't have a blog at all. Maybe they have a blog, but they don't really use it very well. Or they're not sure what they should be doing with it. They don't understand how to be intentional about SEO and content marketing. Lay it out on the line for us. What are your best tips? How do you get started here? Yeah, absolutely. And somebody who, you know, is listening to this podcast and says, hey, I want I want some actionable takeaways. You know, one of the first things I would recommend is to go write an article about moving to your city or living in your city, the best restaurants in your city, the best neighborhoods in your city, the cost of living in your city. They, these are the types of articles that people are going to be searching for. And that moving to piece is a very, very high intentional piece that will capture the right type of, of traffic. Uh, you know, it's people who are actively moving to the area and shopping for homes, most likely. Uh, you know, and by writing that piece, you're answering their questions uh, and you can direct them to searching for homes for sale and you can even add a contact me form or a contact us form and maybe even your phone number if you want people to call you. Uh, you know, one thing I did is we we were getting so many phone calls from that one article. I actually had to create a Facebook group called Moving to Raleigh to help answer all the questions that people had because they kept calling in and I just I didn't have time to answer them anymore. And I said, hey, let me create this Facebook group, Moving to Raleigh. And you ask the questions there and let the community answer. Talk to me about the value of consistency in what you're doing as well. Uh, consistency is really the name of the game when it, when it comes to you know search engine optimization, whether it's content, backlinks, uh, keeping your articles updated, really just being consistent and understanding 
this is a long game and I shouldn't expect to see results right away. But if I stay consistent with it, even if it's just one article a week, you know, after the course of 18 months, one article a week becomes 78 articles. And that's a great uh, portfolio of content. Well, that's a perfect way to end it. Patience and consistency are key in SEO and content marketing. If you need instant traffic to your website, you're going to have to buy some ads. But if you're playing the long game, if you are willing to invest time and be patient, content and SEO are a great way to go. Huge, huge thanks to Ryan Fitzgerald for sharing his blueprint for SEO success, for talking to us about content and links. I got to tell you, this is a topic I've been wanting to do, I think, pretty much since the walkthrough began two plus years ago. So it was fantastic to find an agent who I think is doing it right. Here are your takeaways from this week's episode, an SEO blueprint with Ryan Fitzgerald. Takeaway number one, different blog posts have different purposes. Some are about attracting high intent leads by providing really in-depth information. Others are more about branding and visibility. And others are more about creating great content that will attract links. Takeaway number two, to figure out what to write, put yourself in a buyer's or seller's shoes. What questions would they ask Google? Buyers will probably search for things like moving to your city or living in your city and your city being, you know, Topeka or Boise or Tallahassee or whatever. On the other hand, sellers might type in how to sell my house quickly in your city. We talked about a few of the keyword research tools that you can use, including one that shows right in Google's search results. Takeaway number three, Ryan says your headline is really, really important. He has great success with list style articles. 10 things to know about living in your city is a good clickable headline. Of course, don't get into clickbait, you know, where the headline says one thing and the article offers something else. Don't do that. Nobody likes it. Takeaway number four, Ryan shared two ways that he gets links from other sites. One is direct outreach to sites that he thinks would find his content valuable. The other is a service called Help a Reporter Out. I'll link to that in today's show notes. He also talked about the importance of internal linking and anchor text. In every article that Ryan writes, he's looking for as many as, you know, 10 opportunities to link to other content on his own site. And takeaway number five, SEO requires patience and consistency. Ryan suggested starting with a blog post about moving to your city or living in your city. Write a really comprehensive guide that answers the questions a buyer would have. And I loved what he said there at the end. If you do just one article per week on your blog, a year and a half from now, you're going to have a great portfolio of 78 blog posts that are bringing in traffic and leads. And those are your takeaways for this week. All right, if you have any questions or feedback about what you've heard today, please do get in touch with me. I'd love to hear from you. There's a couple ways you can do it. Uh, number one, leave a voicemail or send me a text. The number is 415-322-3328. You can send an email to walkthrough at homelight.com or just find me in our Facebook mastermind group. Go to Facebook, you can do a search for Homelight Walkthrough and the group should come right up. If you're listening to this podcast now, you should be in our listener mastermind. All right, that's all for this week. Thanks again to Ryan Fitzgerald for joining me and thank you for listening. My name's Matt McGee and you've been listening to The Walkthrough. At Homelight, we believe in real estate agents. We're here to explore how great agents grow their business, stand out from the crowd and become irreplaceable. Go out and sell some homes. I'll talk to you again next week. Bye-bye.